Hi, everyone. From me, Brent Graham of Good for the Game, coming to you live from the 12th Green at Augusta National. You can see in the background of me there, and that's because it's U.S. Masters weekend. I decided to leave the background up after I did the U.S. Masters betting preview. Plenty of action on the go there. But tonight is all about rugby, and we're going to chat Champions Cup quarterfinals. We're going to talk Super Rugby. And good news is, and I actually just realized I haven't brought them up on the show, but we can we can open a website or just discuss them. We've got some Challenge Cup handicaps, which we haven't had previously, but now that we're getting down to the business end of the season, uh, bookmakers feel comfortable to price up. Welcome to all the guys in the live chat there, including Mark, who was hoping to see Oracle in a Leinster jersey, jersey, but no, Mark, you're going to have to settle for me on that one. Let's go to the guests, and we'll start at the top of the screen, the Oracle. He's looking clean cut. He's looking fresh. He's looking like a man who won a lot of money last weekend. Or at the very least, I know you're not betting big at the moment, Kev. You won a lot of bets and some good ones. Yeah, from a unit perspective, it was very really nice, Brent. But yes, a Rand value perspective, perspective it wasn't great. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, yeah, I'm un unlikely in this lifetime to be wearing a Leinster shirt, I'll be honest with you, uh, Mark. <laughs> Unless you send me one that has got Oracle written on the back, I might, uh, I might wear it. Um, yeah, it was a good weekend. Uh, we didn't talk about the Challenge Cup games that I lost on the Lions game. I did think that they'd... Uh, in fact, I actually didn't take a bet before the game. I took a bet when they'd scored the first try, thinking, you know, they're gonna, they are started off well, they're going to play well. And yes, I lost on that game. Uh, lost on the, um, the Cheetahs game I won. I, I took plus 10 and a half... I think it was at 17 to 10 or 18 to 10, something like that. I like that. Um, I didn't spend a lot of money on it, but I, I won on that game. And, yeah, the Sharks were were phenomenal. And uh, the Bulls, and I've got a story to tell about the Bulls. Um, I'll say it now, actually, before we move on to anybody else. Um, so I read this. <laughs> I'm chuckling before I've even told the story because I think it's crazy. So apparently the Bulls had to fly in eight flights to take their game on uh, with Northampton this week. Um, they're obviously buying business class tickets. And I thought to myself, why would they need a flight? Surely they booked this, you know, this plane in advance. And apparently they were waiting to see if they were going to win. They weren't watching the betting boards because the betting boards had them at minus 19. I was happy to take them at, uh, I took minus 24, minus 27, minus 30, and if I'm sticking money on them at that, those numbers, why the hell are their risk department or their travel agency department saying, we've won this game, let's buy the tickets? And at, and at absolute worst, go to the airline and say, you know, we'd like to buy these tickets up front. There is a small percentage chance we're going to lose this game. You know, what's our refund percentage? 95, 90, 92. They've got to come up with some sort of plan because I believe they overpaid for tickets. They screwed around with their whole school. You know, I'm not even going to call it a squad, but there's probably 60 people that go, including the players. And over eight or nine flights is just barbaric. Apparently, they only got together at on Wednesday morning with some people leaving on Sunday night. And I'm sorry, oh, Henrik's just said it's SR Rugby. I'm sorry, heads should roll on the back of that. They were 1 to 20 to win the game. They were minus 19 at 9 to 10, which I called a rubbish quote. It, it was way too low. Come on, man. Put your money where your mouth is. You expect your team to win. Have a go. I mean, that that's just ridiculous. And and let's go to the Stormers. Now, I'm watching the Stormers game. I've had a punt, Nathan, as you know. We'll be with you, you shortly. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I can come out later. Be, <laughs> I'll be two minutes. I won't be two minutes. <laughs> so the Stormers, I backed the Stormers, as I said last week. Uh, I lost on that game as well. Obviously, you guys won on it. You called La, La Rochelle correctly. At 16-0, I'm thinking to myself, how do you lose this game from this point? I didn't take another bet at 16-0, but yeah, I'm sitting, I'm comfortable, I grab another beer, I'm enjoying myself. And then we get to the end of the game, so the last few minutes, they need a score seven to win the game. Stormers go over the try line, and the Oaks like celebrating and the crowd celebrating. I looked at my wife and I said, why are these people celebrating? They haven't won the game. This moron has gone to the right-hand side of the field, no regard of getting closer to the polls. And I'm sorry, if you lose by six or you lose by one, you've still lost the game. Keep the game going. If your only chance to score a try in the corner, don't even bother. Play, play the ball back in. Have another five rucks and have a go at the polls. In that wind, at that moment, you need seven points. You can't put all the, the risk onto the kicker. 
And then Stone Man comes onto our group and he goes, uh, Willem, so he already stuffed it up. He's right, but he's also not right because the try scorer and the team, the last three or four passes that got to that point, is criminal. You've got to go for the polls. I promise you, give me three minutes with a rugby team in the change room at half time. I've been watching Chasing the Soap. You give me three minutes of these people, I'll tell them what they've got to do. Anyway, that's my rant for the week. Okay, Gavin, I made I'm money. The verge the of muting you there. I think if you had gone high on uh, Nathan making his first comment after five and a half minutes, you would have made money on the show. Nathan, I'm going <laughs> to come down to you now. I doubt you've got anything to add on the last week. But anyway, how are things going with you? Do you uh, did you manage to come out ahead last weekend in the end? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the storm has lost, but from my perspective, who cares? The the the, the closing line, the line all week was two and a half. So, you know, this is a game you, where you back the bus. Yeah, yeah. yeah of I, took him, I took him on the board. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we, we kind of called it uh, last week. I think <laughs> everybody was against that um, in chat, so that was a good one. Um, it, yeah, it was a really good weekend. Um, it could have been a bit better. I, I actually I had both sides of the points line in that Brumbies um, Waratahs game, so I needed the misconversion right at the end to scoop. Um, Scoop both bets, so it was pretty. It was a pretty close run thing, but um, yeah, overall, uh, you know, really good. Just to just to come in now, Gab, on my weekend, I had a pretty good one because my best bet was La Rochelle at eight to ten. So to Nathan's point, if you took the plus two and a half Stormers, yeah. you won. If you took the eight even to 10, plus one and a half, yeah. but as much as you were shouting because I was at the track, uh, Royal Victory, Chris's horse winning another Grade One feature, so we had a lovely time at Turpentine. But I was watching it on my phone, and as much as you were angry with the guy for not going closer to the posts. I was pissed off with the La Rochelle guy for allowing him to cut in. Because although he didn't go close, he could have got yes. close, I agree with you, 100%. But for me, the guy should have forced him out. And, and it's funny how we both look at things differently. But in the end, I think it was quite a windy day down there and a, a pretty tough kick. And I know Henrik was on La Rochelle as well, and he really enjoyed that missed kick. But, gents, let's get into the show because we've got a number of games to talk about. I want to start with Super Rugby. And, Nathan, I'm going to bring you in first. We got Moana Pacifica here. They are playing, I think, somewhere in northern New Zealand. This game is taking place. Plus 15 and a half against the Reds. And we got a points line of 60.5. I had a quick look at the weather. Looked a little bit grim from what I could tell. Nathan, what have you got for us in this one? You know, when I looked at the weather, I thought it was actually going to be okay. So I can I can recheck that. Um, but yeah, I long story short, I think the 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 Reds is the right side here. And you mean know, Clearly, we saw what happened with Moana last week, and then it would have been you know a spot where the Reds could maybe have given a few you know fringe players a bit of a run out, and they haven't done that at all. They've, they've brought all the big guns; they're, they're, they're bringing the firepower. Um, and it went, as soon as I saw that, I thought, you know, this line is too short. So you know, I, I was on it at twelve and a half, but um, I, I think the, the number you had up there, I think, was was fourteen and a half. We didn't get that. You know, take that all day. And I think uh, I actually haven't got the good for the game website open at the moment, but I think I kept this somewhere around the, there was a big difference. I was around minus 19 and a half or something. So I'm also very much in the Moana camp here. Anything else on that game then um, before we go to Oracle? No, I mean, I, it's just one of these ones, which d depending on how you go about pricing something up, as you said, it's, it's not a true home game for Moana. Yes, it's but it, you know, there's clearly some trans has been travel for, for the Reds, um, but d depending on you, how you want to judge that home field, um, you know, they're not getting a lot of, they're not going to get any, you know, like a huge amount of support. It's not going to be like it's influencing the referees or any of that kind of thing, which would generally, you know, factor into some home field advantage. So again, that, that's kind of a plus for the Reds. Right, Dan, I see you talking about the Crusaders being your best bet. We'll definitely talk about that later. And Dan, coming in from Twitter, quite rare. We get quite a lot of views on Twitter, but not a lot of comments. So Dan, good to have you on there. Right, Oracle. Super Rugby, I know you focus more on the Champions Cup, but anything that you like in this game? Um, I know you're this not a Moana fan at the moment. How could you be? I mean, how could anybody be? They're rubbish. This is not enough. Again, not enough. But I'll tell you, I'm suspecting there's even a better bet with your points line at 60. And this is not a weather bet. This is purely a, a what-can-they-do bet because at 15, at 60, that's 45, 22. Pacific are not yeah. scoring not scoring 22 points here. So you could go under 22 and a half or even 21 and a half for that matter on the Pacifica. The Reds should beat this handicap. Uh, whether they score 37 points or not, that's another story. So I'd go low on the points here or under on the points. And I'd definitely go under on money Pacifica points. But I think this handicap is, it's not enough. It should be around 20, 22 points. 
maybe even 25. Seriously, this is rubbish. This team's rubbish. Right, well, let's stick with you for the second game. I've already just seen Dan put up. He likes the Crusaders on the handicap here. This handicap sort of bounced around a little bit. A bookie I went to just before we had plus nine and a half uh, Waratahs. I think there is some plus ten and a half. I may even be some of eleven and a half out there during the week. Gavin, so we got a, uh, Waratahs at home against Crusaders. Let's work on plus nine and a half or thereabouts and a points line of fifty four point five. Yeah, Crusaders. Crusaders minus here for me. Uh, I've got to say, this is bottom bottom of the barrel stuff. The Waratahs were very poor. Um, I heard Nathan talking about that earlier. I didn't even see the last kick because I left when uh, Brumbies were well up and I knew that they weren't coming back, so I didn't bother watching the rest of the game. But for me, the Crusaders have turned the corner uh, with that win the other day, and I think the minus is on the cards. Yeah, Waratahs have given me nothing here. So minus Crusaders. It's not, not my best bet of the weekend, but on this game, I'm a minus punter. Right, Nathan, coming to you on this one. Must say, I'm also leaning towards the Crusaders here, but I quite like the points line here. I think we could get points in this one. Uh, the conditions that I checked out in Sydney, it looked like... They're not coming from the Waratahs, though. Uh, sorry, Gav? They're not coming from the Waratahs. The well, points. possibly most of them will come from the Crusaders, but the Waratahs Crusaders have had some high-scoring matches in the past. Nathan, what do you like here? Yeah, 100% agree. Uh, I think Crusaders is the right side here. Uh, they've got... They've gone from having a fly half crisis to having all four of the guys that uh, were were missing uh, available. So good problem to have. Uh, Black at it back. They're starting when you, when you look at the team on paper now. They're starting to look like a, you know a, a crusader team of old. Um, the Waratahs talked about them last week. I, I said they looked a bit dysfunctional. I said they looked like they didn't care that, that potentially like they're trying to get rid of the coach. Uh, you know they, they're now one and six and. It's it's a weird thing because when you watch them play the Brumbies last week, man for man, like in terms of just talent, it's probably relatively even. But they just they're just so they just don't seem to be able to do the basics. The Brumbies do the basics brilliantly. That's one thing that they do great. And and the Waratahs were sort of terrible in that department. And you're just thinking well, it's just it's either coaching or attitude. It's one or the other. Um, and um, neither of those two things is you know something you want to go into a game like this uh, on the back foot. So yeah, I mean. Yeah, I, as I said, Crusaders, I think, is the right side. Just uh, Mark asking if you're wearing a Chief shirt. Yes, it is. And you're actually based in Auckland. But I have forgotten, uh, Nathan, who do you actually support? Or as a punter, do you just support whoever your money's on like I do? No, it's uh, – well, I, I, yeah, I was born and raised in Chiefs country. So, yeah, I'm a Chiefs fan. Right. Then we're going to be coming to that game next because it's going to be an, an absolute cracker. And, and Nathan, we'll let you kick us off here. Hurricanes plus 1.5, they're the pace setters this year. The Chiefs, for all the fact that they are favourites for this tournament, have dropped a couple of games. And we've got a points line here of 49.5. I know there was some weather about in Hamilton. You would normally perhaps expect this to be somewhere around the 53.5 mark, so no doubt weather taken into account. But this is, without a doubt, the game of the weekend. Where's your money going? Yeah, I, I wasn't surprised that this line opened where it did, but I'm surprised that it hasn't progressed a little bit further towards the Hurricanes. I, in my head, I, I kind of felt like that it will close with maybe the Hurricanes as small favourites, but that so far at least that that hasn't happened. So um, it, it's basically it's a it's a long term quality versus short term form. I think here is what we're looking at. So the Hurricanes are clearly the the form team. They're the kind of the hot hand. Um, Chiefs have underperformed versus expectation, but still a, a, you know, a stack team um, full of quality. I I won't be getting involved. I think on the line. On this one, on the handicap on this one, um, because my numbers favour the Chiefs, and I, but I, I'm not, I, I don't have a strong feeling that that is correct. Uh, it's an interesting one because if you look at uh, last season, teams played twice, Chiefs won both games. Um, one of them was kind of similar to this, and that I think the there was a, a, a game in Wellington where the Chiefs were sort of one point favourite, and it was very similar. And I think a lot of money had come in on the Canes um, to get to that number. And they ended up, you know, the, the Chiefs won quite easily, I think, in the end. So, um, I don't know, it, it, this, it might be a gap. In a funny way, you'd look at the Kane's results and you'd, you'd think they've been pretty outstanding, but I'm just not 100% sure they've really been tested. You know, I think they they beat the Blues in a game which, which you know, turned into a bit farcical, really, where the, the Blues had the, uh, the only two backs on the bench, had two concussions in the first quarter. Um, you know, they had the number eight out on the wing and all this kind of stuff. Like, it, it wasn't like a true reflection, I think, of maybe how the game went. And even then, the Canes didn't win by very much. So, uh, Canes obviously beat the Crusaders, but made pretty hard work of that as well. 
So I think right now I'm, I'm just still not 100% convinced that the Canes are as good as their record suggests. So if I was going to lean in a direction, it, it would be to the Chiefs. And I think, the, yeah, and sorry, just to say, on, on the points line, um, yeah, you're right, it's been affected by weather. I took a 55 and a half earlier in the week and I've watched that come down. So there, there will be a point where I'll probably do the same as what I did last week and um, play back in the other direction and, and hope to scoop. Hope to scoop a, a middle there. Yeah, I must say, this is a, a tough game. I was leaning Hurricanes as well. I actually made them slight favourites for this game. But at the same time, this could be one of those games, you know, either team by seven or less or something like that. But I want to bring up a comment here because it's, it's appropriate to bring the Oracle in at this point. Dan Ash comes in and says, Granny's pension on the Hurricanes. Now, I've got a feeling if Granny's pensions go down on this game, I've got a feeling it'll be on the Chiefs. What do you say, Gav? Yeah, Dan is a little bit wrong. And I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. Um, I... I've not watched, or should I say, I've not seen, I can't remember seeing the last time the Hurricanes beat um, the Chiefs, and I've got to believe it was before COVID when we were still playing. Um, so, you know, after last week's game, and I know that the Crusaders beat the Chiefs, I just, yeah, the the Chiefs for me. Um, but I don't like minus one and a half bets. I'm a... I'm a bored punter at this point. I'd rather take the eight to ten or seven and a half to ten Chiefs to win the game here. I wouldn't take minus one and a half, especially after last week's Stormers game. I don't like that one. Two, three, I'm okay, but in fact, I'm not great on them. I'm a four or more punter when it comes to the minus, or I'm a I'm a bored punter if it's less than that. So Chiefs on the board here, and it's not Granny's pension stuff. I think this will be this is the highlight uh, uh, game of the weekend. I think it'll be great, but I do think Chiefs will edge it. Uh, so it does go into your one to seven call, but I think the Chiefs have got enough to win this game. And I don't, can't remember them winning. I can't remember Hurricanes getting the upper side of the Chiefs in a few years now, actually. Well, I'll take your word for that. I haven't looked at the head to head on that. But, Gab, let's go into the last game. It's the Rebels plus three and a half against the Highlanders. The Rebels, this is, of course, being played in Melbourne. From what I can tell, conditions should be decent. And we've got a points line of 57.5. Anything for you in the final Super Rugby game? Yes, I would. I would have thought the Highlanders were probably a bigger minus here. Um, this handicap's caught me by surprise. I'm going to say I'm going to have a small punt here, Rebels, to win the game on the board. Probably 14, 15, or 10. Small punt. I just think after their smashing of that Drew team, especially the second half, um, Highlanders haven't given me that much. So yeah, I'm a small Rebels board player here. That's it. Small. Don't like this game, but I will have a bet. And Nathan, over to you on this one. Yeah, I've sort of flip-flopped a little bit mentally on this game. And, and it has come down a point from four and a half after the teams come out. There was a few kind of quite random selections by the by the Highlanders. I think it's probably right where it should be now. But I do quite like the under in this game. I think I um, sort of mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I think the Highlanders will, in general, be an unders team um, because they, they kind of do a lot of the basics well in terms of set-piece and defence. But um, they just seem to be able to be unable to sort of find that attacking edge to, to score. And um, the Rebels last week, a lot of the platform that they laid for beating the draw was based on on set piece. Um, I don't think the drawer contested a line out all day and they were getting scrum penalties from every single scrum. That won't happen here. I think it'll be very even in terms of set piece and, and that'll probably kind of cancel each other out and lead to a bit of a stalemate, I think. Yeah, Henrik making the point about Melbourne being high scoring, and that's the one thing I was also originally looking at unders in this game, but I also just got that fear of Melbourne as being just a very, very fast ground. And I also <laughs> think yeah, the, the, uh, in the water there. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely something, <laughs> something there. Um, Connor, I mean, coming on and saying, do we have something really like, Sorry, I was just going to say something like that. I mean, you. It, there needs to be some sort of theory behind it. Like, what's the science behind why Melbourne would be a high scoring ground uh, above any other? You know I, mean? I, I, I think it actually comes down to the quite often. I would say there's two things, two reasons why a ground might be high scoring. One, if the if it, if it doesn't get a lot of humidity, for one thing, because I think humidity for me is a great unders factor. But but for me, it's actually the state of the pitch. Like if you look at that Cape Town, okay, they've relayed it now. But if you look at that Cape Town pitch, you know when the pitch rips up on that, and I think that Melbourne, I don't know, don't they play some other sports on there or something? Yeah, they so do. It just yeah. it, to me, it looks like it's closer cut than. Than some of the others, but yeah, I must, but haven't researched it. But I, but I agree with you. If you're going to come up with a 
theory like that, you've probably got to look at it. But for me, I think it's what I would call a fast track. Suits running rugby and, you know, if, con if conditions are good, as opposed to some grounds where it's quite heavy underfoot. Um, I, I put Durban in that category as well, where I often get the feeling it's just a bit of heaviness. But, but yeah, that's just that's just pure perception. I haven't done any any research into that one. Right, let's just have a look. Anything else in the comment section from the guys before we move on to the Champions Cup quarterfinals? Now, we are down to quarterfinal stage, and we've had some big price movements already this week. And, Nathan, I'll kick off with you. We've got the Bordeaux Beagles here, minus 17 and a half against Harlequins. I priced this one, I think, somewhere around minus 21 and a half Bordeaux, if I'm not mistaken. So not surprised to see the early line of sort of minus 13 and a half, 14 and a half has come out. Yeah, I'd, I earlier in the week, this was at 12 and a half, and that just felt like a bit of a gift. Um, this is almost a, a bit of a repeat of what I said last week about, about Saracens. Um, so Bordeaux, we'll start with Bordeaux. They've got, um, I think it's Jellibit. I think it's how you say his name. The um, the fly half is back. So so they're, you know, theoretically probably a little bit stronger than they were last week. Uh, it sounds like Harlequins are going to be missing Marla, missing Danny Kier. There was a press conference where I think somebody asked the coach whether they were going to put out their full strength team. Now, the fact that you actually are being asked that question in the quarterfinal of a competition and the fact that his answer was kind of ambiguous about how he was approaching it, I think it just tells you everything you need to know about, you know, their mentality going into this game. I don't think they think they can win. I don't think they're trying to win. Um, I think, as you said, this this could easily be 20 plus. Um, so I, I, I would, I would. <laughs> it's obviously steamed already this number, but uh, it's probably still too low. Yeah, I see. I took them at minus 14 and a half in a treble with Leinster six and a half and Northampton on the board at 15 to 20. We'll talk about those other games, but the lives have, lives have certainly moved nicely in my favor here. But Oracle. Let's go with you. I'm, first of all, very much with Nathan on this one. I didn't get the 14 and a half straight up, only in a multiple, but I'd be happy to take 17 and a half. They gave Saracens an absolute hiding, and I think that Quinns are going to put up the white flag at some stage. Oracle, what do you think? Yeah, you can go minus 25, yeah, with confidence. This is too low. It's way too low. In fact, this is uh, this is fighting uh, the Sharks for best bet of the weekend. Um, yeah, this is a big minus. I just want to ask um, Nathan a question. So you're a Chiefs... Uh, a person and something my son he really likes the Chiefs as well and something we've been talking about since 2011 he was old enough to enjoy rugby at that point um the cowbells do they yeah. sell them outside the stadium or do you have your own one at home that you bring along with you like we do Vuvuzelas because uh, it's the only stadium and it's quite a quite an interesting one whenever they play Chiefs play at home the cowbells are are out there and uh, it's quite an it's a unique sound and you know if you were in the kitchen on the pub you'd know it was a chief's home game because you can hear yeah. them in the background yeah that for the uh the mulu bells as they call them yeah that's a, a, a mulu Waikato. bells mulu mulu, mulu. The, mulu the mulus is so the waikato ebc team it's obviously crossed over into the chiefs because they're playing in the same uh yeah to answer your question yeah you, you bring your own one from home because you know you get given one on your first birthday that's just um how it works <laughs> very nice <laughs> Yeah, yeah, minus, then, yeah, uh, Brent, minus all the way, all the way. Happy with the minus. Right, I'm going to stick with you, Oracle, for the next game. Leinster minus eight and a half. I just had a look. I kept this minus nine and a half. It opened minus six and a half here in South Africa. The money's gradually come for Leinster. Now, uh, Leinster did beat La Rochelle by seven points in wet conditions away from home. But if you want to have a look at the knockout rugby these sides have played, La Rochelle have had the edge, albeit just winning the last two finals. And I think their last three games in the Champions Cup. Now, La Rochelle have obviously had to travel back from Cape Town. I believe they've been in, uh, I think, Cork since Monday. So they didn't have the sort of problems the Bulls had. I suppose they knew they were coming back. So their union could book. They were on one plane. It was three weeks win or ago. Lose. So yes. Yeah, win or lose, we're coming back. But anyway, we've got Leinster here, minus eight and a half, Gavin. I've got a firm view on this game. Uh, what about you? Um, I'm on La Rochelle. And I'll tell you, um, I didn't realize it would be eight. I thought it would be four or five. So the eights caught me by surprise a little bit. But uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm a La Rochelle uh, to qualify punty. I'm not I'm not going to take them on the board here. I'm, I'm actually going to rather take them to qualify because when you're taking a plus team on the board, you know, sometimes they end up on a draw. And, you know, yes, it is, you know, five or sometimes 7% of the price. I'd rather take the, uh, the board price. Uh, so take a little bit lower on eight. I'm expecting five to two maybe 2.7 to 1. Um, I think that if they've come to Cape Town, 16-0 down in the wind, and they've beaten that team, 
And they've beaten this team the last time they played them in this tournament in the final. Uh, in fact, two finals, as you pointed out. Um, I'm on uh, I'm on La Rochelle here. It's not a massive punt, but I'm going to enjoy the game and I'm going to back the team in yellow. Right, Fareed coming in, and there's been a lot of other comments. Uh, Mark Dump, he's saying he's disappointed in the Oracle there. Of course, Mark is the one who's... It's a small punt. Yeah. Uh, Leinster match fit this year to win by 10 plus. So, Nathan, I'm going to bring you in here and say that I make Leinster good things. I'm sorry I didn't climb on the minus six and a half, but I'm happy at minus eight and a half. For me, this La Rochelle side, I can't put my finger on it, but they're not quite the same side to me that has won this tournament twice in a row. I think Leinster are going to get revenge and they're going to win this, as Farid says, by double figure margin. So, you can be the decider now between the Oracle and myself. Uh, okay. right, he's, a, he's a Leinster punter. I can see it already. No, I'm going to call I'm, him no better. This is actually this is actually a game I'm not probably going to be involved in. I think I think it's six and a half. It was probably a decent, um, you know, to have a go at Leinster here. I, th I think this is creeping up into the territory where I, I I'm not going to touch it. Um, you know, I think it's it's probably I, and there's been some pretty compelling arguments made from both sides. And you know, like I don't have a strong feel for it. So you know, these are, these are the kind of games that you know I could easily see this being. A, a, you know, a grind out win for somebody by, you know, just a couple of points. But equally, like, I, I think, you know, Leicester are a quality outfit. And if, um, you know, if they do kind of get up, uh, maybe they carry on with it. So, you know, that's just a, this whole range of outcomes that, you know, I don't feel strongly about any of them. Yeah, and it's interesting. Gab did say a La Rochelle coming back from 16 0 down. I'll give the other way I would look at it is what were they doing 16 0 down to the Stormers as well? As I just have a feeling this is not the La Rochelle side of the last two years, but interesting. So we haven't really got a, a decider there, Gab. It's, it's, it's sort of head-to-head, -head, you and me on this one. We'll see how we go. Leinster beat La Rochelle in France four months ago. Yes, Mark, that was a 69, if I recall correctly, in very wet conditions. It was a real uh, war, that one. Yeah, let's see what happens. But I'm quite firmly in, in the Leinster camp on that one. Gav? I was just going to say to you, if, if Leinster was 16-0 down against the Stormers and won, and was playing La Rochelle in La Rochelle, what would you have said? Because I honestly think that's an achievement. I really do. I, I think no, 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 not, not taking that away. It's an achievement, the actually. The comeback was good, and obviously I was very happy about it. But um, I just I just didn't – I mean, I feel too – I don't think the Stormers, to me, are quite the team they have been in the past, you know, a couple of seasons as well. And I just felt to be 16-0 down, you know, I don't think they – They've come back last year in the final. I can't remember how much they came back from, but I mean, Leinster started like a house on fire. And La Rochelle walked them down and they came back and took them. And I just don't see, uh, yeah, I don't see them doing that again. So there you go. There's, there's, there's evidence of a, of a second half comeback in two massive games for them. So if they do find themselves 10 or 10 or down or 12 3 down or whatever it is at half time, back them in the second half because they probably will come back. They're that kind of a team. So yeah, well, I. I like them at I like them at the price. The price for me is too big for it. It should be closer. That's all. Oh, yeah, it's, fair it, enough, fair enough. It sounds like maybe a Leinster halftime versus La Rochelle full yes. time there. And that'll be a big yes. price. And that and that's a type of bet you'll probably get something like uh, five or six to one maybe on that. And that's a type of bet to take when you don't when you want to watch the game, but you don't particularly want to put yourself under all sorts of uh, stress. Uh, Henrik just making a comment here, and I'm just gonna I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but Storm has played with a win the first half and La Rochelle with a win the second half. Okay, good point, Henrik. That was a strong win, and that's why the game was a game of two halves. So fair enough. So he's he's pretty much destroyed both of our arguments there, Gav. You said La Rochelle came back from 16 0 and I said, Why were they 16 0 down? But we know now well, was, because of the win. <laughs> yeah, so so Henrik's right. They were 13 0 down, but I I'm you know, I don't know if the wind was as big as I've seen it before as a factor. So it was a factor. I just don't agree that it's a massive factor. But the Stormers started off the second half quite well and got 16-0 up. So I'm thinking you're 16-0 up. You, you've got to play a little bit differently. And I'll tell you that La Rochelle defense in the, in the final 10 minutes of the game was fantastic. They made a couple of mistakes, but they defended. And stopping that Stormers player from getting close to poles was an achievement as well. I mean, I could blame the Stormers for not getting closer, but La Rochelle were part of that, and they made sure that he didn't get closer, and they knew what was going to happen. I mean, that kick was crazy. It was not, it was wider than the poles away from the poles. It was a it was a miss by a long way, country mile. 
It was. But, and, and let's not forget, though, that Barney LeBoc won the, the group stage match with a kick in like the final minute. Yeah. Obviously, slightly different conditions. But anyway, we onto this. Uh, it's certainly going to be one that you don't want to miss this weekend, Leinster La Rochelle. Um, and yeah. Gail, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to start with you on the next game because there's been big price movements here. You've already touched on the Bulls' travel factor. Now, I got 15 to 20 in my travel, the Saints, um, when it came out in South Africa early in the week. Then it sort of settled at minus two and a half. Now, the big news from the Bulls' perspective, and as far as I know, it's official, that the Springboks did not travel with the Bulls over. So you're missing, the Bulls are missing a lot of their star players. Now, Gav, this is going to be a t- I'm dying to hear what you're going to say, and that's one of the reasons I'm starting with you on this one. Because I know team news, you're not always such a big follower. Can, of that, not, but here we got to have can, we, can we just pause this while we all go and beat Northampton? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's crazy. And, uh, I mean, I don't know, Nathan, before I bring Oracle in, what sort of line are you seeing your side now on, on the Saints? So in the time that we've been sitting here talking, it's gone from 7.5 to 10.5. So yeah. it's just, that's just in the last, you know, half an hour or so. So I... I, I uh, when I went to bed, this was going to be one of my best bets. That uh, I think it was sort of like two and a half or three and a half. And then I, when I woke up this morning, it was um, you know like already at seven or something. And I was like, what what have I missed? Something's happened. Yeah, yeah, that's a big team news. So, Gav, um, we've just heard of this move now. If you tip the bulls on the board, I believe it's going out to fourteen and a half. The bookmakers say. What are you going to do here, Mr. Oracle? I'm going to tell you to wait until one minute before the game and have your bet on the Bulls. I think the Bulls can win this game. I'm not worried about players here, Springboks here, Springboks there. I, you know, we've seen it so many times in the Curry Cup, uh, Springboks playing and not playing. It doesn't make a massive. I don't, I, I don't, I've, I've got to the age of 53, 26 years in this business. I, I and I still don't care about the play, players missing and players not missing. It just, it doesn't bother me. I just don't care about it. But I can see things like this. And again, I'm a, I'm a Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday punch. I haven't had a bet on this game yet. Jake White's not a moron. There's a long time before between now and the game. And there's no there was no jet lag this time. They took eight flights. They they played PlayStation and Chess.com and whatever it was in the airport uh, stairs. They didn't have any uh, yeah, no jet lag or anything like that. They got to their field at, on Wednesday. They won easily the other day. I, I just, you know, no way the Bulls can win without the box. I don't believe that. Um, I'm looking at uh, Northampton's results here. I had a small bet on Munster, which I lost on the weekend. I also backed Connacht to win their game. Um, so, yeah, the Munster game, I expected them to get closer. They were 2-1, to one, I think, if I remember correctly. I thought it was a decent value. I'm, I'm a, yep, yeah, I'm a Bulls punter here. But you right. know what? This is this could start at plus fifteen or sixteen, and at ten and a half I'm interested. But yeah, hang on because it'll get worse. There's lots of people out there that will push this handicap another five or six points. So whether you agree with Oracle on the teams or not, I think that's excellent advice. If you want to go for the Bulls, don't rush. Wait yeah. kickoff, so if you're a Bulls punter, yeah, wait, wait until the Marnie LeBoc shot clock starts before you even have yeah. a bet. Yeah, no, it's definitely not going to reverse. Henrik's saying he expected nothing less from the Oracle, and he's saying he agrees he can't have the Saints minus. Personally, I'd handicapped this game six and a half when I thought both teams were going to be at full strength. I thought the trip over was going to be tough, and I think the Saints are a formidable side at home. At ten and a half, it's getting big, but you know what? I think we saw last week in a couple of those games, like the Bordeaux game and and that against Saracens, you know, sometimes in a, in a knockout fixture, when one team gets to the point that they realize they've lost... Things can blow out pretty quickly. Nathan, oh, what, yeah, what, are you thinking yeah. This, yeah, what are you thinking on this game now? Yeah, it's just interesting just thinking about sort of the, the market dynamics about the, the line moves and that they often say in the NFL that the, the big line moves generally move a little bit too far um, and you can generally bet back in the other direction um, because the public sort of jump on and they see these lines. Like they see it moving, but they don't necessarily know why. And the biggest thing is I think that People don't, if they don't really know what the line should be, then they'll just keep betting something until it <laughs> goes too far. Uh, I, my observation, I guess, of the rugby market probably just a little bit different. Like, I think sometimes the line moves don't get bet far enough. And again, I, I think that people betting rugby 
I mean, there isn't a whole lot of, uh, you know, syndicates and groups and people with models and all of this kind of analytics and all this sort of stuff where, you know, the, the, in the NFL, it's very fine margins. People know down to a half point, like what the right side is, you know, because it's just a, a heavily analyzed thing. I think sometimes people hear, and, and, and I've heard you say this before, Brent, where, you know, you, you'll see the line move and then you'll say, okay, well, it's already moved now, so I'm not going to get involved. Like you feel like you've missed out on something. Whereas the truth is you could probably just keep going, you know, up to a certain point, of course, but you see the movie, oh, I've missed out. I'm not going to bet it. I mean, this could be anything. I mean, <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I bet this um, when it opened at sort of one and a half. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to go and spend that money now. Um, to be honest, but <laughs> but um, the, the thing is that even earlier in the week, right? Like, I mean, this reminded me of, I think it was the, uh, the 2012 Super Rugby final. The Sharks, I think they went to Brisbane and they went home uh, back to Durban and they played somebody. And then they came to Hamilton to play in the final. And they were never going to, they should not have even got on that flight. They were never going to win that, like, you know? And um, so the, the Bulls have gone, and I was just looking at their fixtures, right? So that they, they played at Leinster, um, got a hiding, came back home and gave Leon a hiding. And now they're going to go to Northampton without this spring box having traveled, you know, like planes, trains and automobile, like some sort of bloody national lampoon movie or something. Um, you know, like it's just the, the whole thing just feels a bit farcical to me. Like they've been set up to lose here, I think. And um, look, I, I don't know where this number will, will end, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in a way because like as I said, I came into this with, you know, two and a half or three and a half or whatever it was, was going to be my best bet. I'm not sure it's a tell you now, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. But I do agree with you. I think this line is going to move more. So like Gav says, if you if you want to back the Bulls, hold fire. But if you want to get on Saints, it's going to be, and there really is a massive scramble to get onto the Saints. And then it's just a question of how much is enough for minus backers. But certainly if I look at it, um, if I was originally six and a half, thinking Bulls were full strength, I'm more than happy to go in again at minus 10 and a half. I think Saints are going to be uh, too strong at home. Anything else, Oracle, before we, we march off this game? Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, Nathan, talking about the Sharks and the and the uh, Brumbies game, I actually remember that, I think it was the 2001 game with uh, Butch James, the final uh, Sharks scored six and lost 36-6 or 36. I can't remember it was. You're right. Uh, even in that that uh, final, the Sharks uh, had travelled about quite a bit. Um, the other thing is, uh, if, you've, if you've ever watched, uh, sorry, read this book, it's called Smart Money. It's written by a, a poker player, actually, Brent. I can't remember yeah. the guy's name. But he'd uh, he'd gone to uh, – he was punting on NFL. And he, one of the stories he had in there uh, – and it's been 20 years since I read this book, but I just remember it very clearly after discussing this game. Is He's sitting with a bag of money. He's got $30,000 in this um, have a sack or whatever he described it as. And, the, and, and he's sitting inside the sports book in, in Las Vegas. And the guy says to him, yeah, uh, what are you what are you doing? You're gonna have a bet. He says, Well, he looks at the screen, it's three and a half, and he's been told he's got a punt at four and a half. So he's waiting and he's waiting. And then uh it goes four and a half, and the guy says, Oh, you want to have a bet now? He says, Yeah, I've just waited for four and a half. Now it is. He says it took him half an hour to count the money, but he got us plus four and a half, and the team the team lost by four and he got the money. Yeah. So yeah, I, in the case of the bulls here, hang around, keep your bag of money in your hands. Wait for 12 and a half, 15 and a half, and have a go. 100%. Right, last game we're going to go to uh, Nathan for this. We will touch on the Challenge Cup as well. This handicap has been stable all week. Now, I actually originally capped this game 17 and a half, but straight away I just felt when I saw the 21 and a half, no, the bookies have got this right. I got it wrong. 17 and a half was too low. Uh, to lose against Exeter, this is a big cap, Nathan. Last game of the weekend, really. If you're chasing at this stage, what do you do? <laughs> don't bet that's my advice <laughs> <laughs> no i like i it's it is very rare for me actually speaking about that to to not know what i'm going to bet before the weekend actually starts you know like i'm i'm pretty much as of right now like locked into already what i'm going to do like you know um i I'm, I'm actually away for the weekend i don't want to be looking at my phone and trying to figure out what i'm going to do and all that kind of stuff but um yeah, it, like it, in in general, the, the only time I'm betting, you know, ten minutes before the game is you know where there's something weather related that's changed. Um, but that you know that's just me. Um, this one, yeah, I think it's probably lined about right. Um, it, I, I don't necessarily lot like a you know big cap in a game like this. It's sort of um, it, I can't really bet against to lose. 
Um, but at the same time, we don't like a number this big. So yeah, it's, it's not one I would, I'd touch. Yeah, I've got to say that's pretty solid advice. Gav, I'm, I'm very much the same thinking this handicap's about right. Of course, it doesn't mean I'm not going to get involved. Like Nathan says, 10 minutes before kickoff, it'll probably depend how I'm looking in the Good. Masters and how my weekend's going. But uh, at the moment, as I'm sitting here drinking water and level-headed, um, I'm saying also <laughs> agree with Nathan. Not, nothing strong here, Oracle. And you? I just remember that. Uh, I keep going back to movies and books here, but that what was it? Uh, um I can't remember the name with uh, Matthew McConaughey or whatever his name is. Yes. Yeah, show me the money or something like that. Randers or something, wasn't it? Or what was it? No, it was the NFL, well, the betting, the betting movie. Oh, and, okay. uh, I watched. Oh, you can imagine Mike. The Oak said, "No, no, not that one." Um, he was a tipster. So the guy says to him, "You know why they have Tuesday night football?" He says, uh, "No, uh, sorry, Monday night football. Why they have Monday night football?" This is for all likes that lost on Sundays. They can have another go. Yeah. So, yeah, right. don't get involved in this game. Uh, if you've lost for the weekend, uh, switch it off before. But if you are winning and you've got a little bit of extra money, I'm going to tell you the minus is the right way to go here. Yeah? Um, yeah, I'm a minus punter here. I don't see I don't see anything less than a 20-point win here. So, yeah, I mean, it could be 21 or 19 or 20. But I honestly, I think this will be more... It's a small minus bet for me. But if I've had a good weekend up until this point, which I'm expecting to, it might just be a few coins uh, just to watch the game. I wouldn't get involved here. But I wouldn't – it's quite no, so it's, sorry, minus or no bet. I wouldn't I wouldn't take the plus. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think this is the kind of game – the plus could arrive, but you're going to sweat it out no matter what. Whereas there is there is a good chance if you back the minus here, you could be feeling pretty comfortable by half time if, if – to lose run absolutely wide and that's why for reed and i actually agree with your comment here for reed you like the big minuses just picking the right spot is the key and gavin we only have to go back a week chiefs minus 28 and a half it's a massive handicap you were more than happy to take it on and i mean you were never in doubt um, no and, and, and in fact uh, if i remember my comment brent it was um in fact i, I, I do remember it because i wrote it on your uh, on your page uh, underneath the video yes I saw it was that. a case of short that that felt like it was so far away from where it should have been. I was at minus thirty eight. I was still interested. Minus forty two. I was still interested in that in that game. So I did take big minuses on that game, and and I was confident taking them. Uh, I really was. Then, uh, yeah. Just sometimes you, you feel that. There's, 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 nothing, there's nothing wrong with taking big minuses. I think the key point of that was like, I think that what um, what the comment said was you know picking your spot. Well, picking your spots. What you need to do for any bit, <laughs> you know, like whether it's a big moment or not. Like, I mean, that, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and, yeah, and I see, uh, just, I see uh, he's uh, talking uh, about Varsity Cup. I haven't had a Varsity Cup bet actually. And and on that question, uh, Nathan, do you have uh, Varsity uh, betting, uh, university rugby playing each other? Does that happen no, in New Zealand? Do you have a tournament? So we, the universities, um, they don't really play, they don't play against each other, like there's no kind of league. So generally what will happen is there'll be club rugby, which is just, you know, like open, just all traditional clubs. And the, most of the universities will have a have a team in the, the local club competition. And I must that's say that one way of getting awesome. drunk people together on a Monday night. It definitely works in South Africa. It's worked for 15 years and it's uh, it's amazing. We all love yeah. it. No, yeah, for us up until recently, and it's, there was um, a little bit of politics behind it, but um, it was Cheers actually buddy, first, yeah. first fifteen rugby like um, is quite big, and it was on TV as I said up until recently. I'm sure it'll come back eventually, but it was like yeah, it was some politics about why it's not on TV. But yeah, first first fifteen rugby is 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 big. That's schoolboy rugby. Yeah, but he just saying the movie. Yes, two for the money and two for the money. I remember now. Big minuses has the bigger range. And, and just on that UJ one, I mean, I actually, I wrote a preview for, actually for World Sports Betting there. They opened the line at minus 28 and a half. And I said, this is my best bet, the UJ minus 28 and a half. I would have kept it north of 40. And then, um, and Gav, I'll mention a bookie, you know, Boyles were minus 22 and a half. I think Sunbet were minus 24 and a half. So I stocked up, if I want to say as much as I can on Varsity Cup, I didn't have much money, unfortunately, with Boyles. But I got the... The, the thing, and then the problem is with that game is like you've got no TV coverage or anything, so you're literally following the odd score that will come through on Twitter. But yeah, that was a good one. It looked like a trap at one stage, but the punters got it right, and the, the line certainly moved nowhere near to to what it probably should have been. Anyways, gents, that's the Champions Cup. I am gonna, I haven't got the betting up, but I am gonna bring up the 
uh, uh, let's discuss the Challenge Cup um, handicaps. Uh, Nathan, I'll start with you. And first of all, ask: Do you do you look at the Challenge Cup? Because up until now, it's been quite tough. Uh, have you had a look at this one? I, I haven't actually. No, I, I've just stuck to Champions Cup at this point. But um, that's right. I can I can shoot from the hip. Okay, great. We well, I'll start here. with you then. The first one we've got is Gloucester at home to Ospreys, and here we got minus seven and a half. Uh, minus. Minus seven and a half, Gloucester, Ospreys. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say Ospreys. Ospreys on the plus there, Gavin. Yeah. It's the team that beat the Lions at Ospreys. That's right. Or was the yeah. other way around? No, the Lions no, beat them. No, the Os Ospreys won that one, I think. I, yes. I yeah. Yes. So they rubbish those Welsh teams, though. Yeah, I'd be a plus punter here, but small. Off the top of my head right now, hearing that handicap. We'll go to the other one. Uh, Fareed, just to mention to you, I must say one thing about Varsity Cup, you're going to like something strong, but getting a lot of money on the top line is very difficult. Correct, you know, exactly. Have very, low, oh. very low limits here, but it's still good fun to get involved. Um, Gav, next game, Claremont at home to Ulster, minus five and a half. Ulster, all the way. I'll start on the plus. Very interesting. I would have thought. Yeah, no, board. I'll go board. Yeah, that no, that no, that board. team battled to beat the cheaters. They really did battle to beat the cheaters. I'm an Ulster here. Right, Admiral reckons Clement uh, shooting from the hip there, Nathan. What do you think? Yeah, I'll say Clement. I haven't seen any of the games, but um, French team at home. It, it sounds pretty yeah. handy. I'll I'll do likewise. Also, haven't been that impressed with with Ulster lately. I must say, we'll stick with Nathan. Sharks minus nine and a half against Edinburgh. This handicap started seven and a half a couple of weeks ago in the URC, and the Sharks beat the handicap. I think they won by 24-14 or something like that. They're now minus nine and a half, Nathan. Yeah, right. So they, they couldn't cover in a game that mattered, and, and then we're <laughs> expecting them to cover this one, which they probably don't care about at all. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit on the Sharks, I think. Sharks there, minus nine and a half. Gab, I know you've got something on this game because you were... This was my best bet of the weekend, Brent. I, you know, I, did, I didn't know what the handicap was, and I was expecting it to be below 10. I was expecting a single digit here, and I was going to say, I'm sorry, um, this is minus 20 stuff. The Sharks will run away with this. This is race over. There's, there's no, the Sharks can book their ticket for wherever they're going after that, and if they're at home, they don't need to book a ticket. But if they're going to be going away, they can book their ticket right now before the game because they, they will win this game, and they will win it comfortably. This is my bet of the weekend. The Sharks team, something's happened. If something's been fixed, the team is always good on paper, and then now they're starting to deliver the results. I'm all over the Sharks here. Minus by a long way. I'm taking bigger minuses here. Right, nice confident call by the Oracle there. And then Oracle last game of the weekend, Benetton up against Connacht. They're at home, Benetton, minus four and a half. Connacht on the board. Both Irish teams away on the board to win. And... Uh, and the, the Sharks, to uh, economy of the first one was, yeah. So I'm, both, I'm on the two Irish teams and I'm on the Sharks. Sharks minus nine off. Henrik Swat, the Undertaker, coming in and saying Edinburgh plus all the way. Uh, Admiral, though, agreeing with the Oracle there and saying he does think the Sharks have started to turn a corner. Um, it's not so much a corner if you go around uh, West Bank uh, corner. It's like a, it's a 180. It's not a corner. It's not a 90. This is a 180, <laughs> Sharks. Right. Past the 90 then, last week. Okay, well, could someone Google the definition of a corner and we'll see if that's accurate. No, I'm only kidding. Right, Nathan, uh, final game there. Benetton minus four and a half against Connacht. Uh, I'll say Benetton. Right, Benetton, Anders, take agreeing with you. Farid, I think, also expects him to win easily. Right, uh, what does Farid say? Sharks still need Edson to complete the picture for me. Edinburgh. So, Gab, uh, yeah, a couple of the boys in the live chat going against you there on the Sharks. But, of course, you're always going to get different opinion. Otherwise, bookies will go out of business, that's for sure. So, yeah, interesting. I haven't really looked at those Challenge Cup. And games. we only need one person on the show. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If we all agreed, and it could be me. <laughs> I could be <laughs> right. Let's go now, Gab. Uh, you've pretty much given us your best bet, but just confirm it as the Sharks minus. And then anything else strong that you like on the weekend? Yeah, what was the other one from earlier? The, can't remember what I said, but yes, Sharks minus. Definitely, okay, best right. bet. Okay, Sharks best bet for, for Gavin. And uh, Nathan, your best bet or bets? Yeah, well, as I said, I got my Northampton bet got blown up. So, 
<laughs> that's um yeah yeah I was gonna do that but uh so I won't be doing that but um so I think I think Bordeaux Bordeaux on the minus as I said yeah I think I'll probably run away with that one um and then in terms of Super Rugby uh the Reds um still like that one the Crusaders and yes and I quite fancy the, the under on the Rebels Highlanders as well right quite a lot that Nathan fancy there just a reminder I did send a special newsletter out today for the U.S. Masters because I was so excited about that event. But just a reminder, if you haven't subscribed yet to the Good for the Game newsletter, it comes out generally on a Friday. Last week we caught a La Rochelle at 8 to 10. A little bit fortunate to get that one, but we also caught the Acker quite nicely. Ended on the Bulls minus 17, and that trotted up quite nicely at 11 to 1. So do join us on the mailing list there. As far as my best bet goes this weekend, well, I will put that out. I'm very much, I like that Bordeaux bet, uh, Nathan. I like Leinster quite a bit. Nothing for me in the in the in the Challenge Cup, and I'm a little bit lukewarm on on Super Rugby as well as, as far as this weekend goes. Right, that brings us to the end of the show. Um, quickly, Gav, I just know you you you, you follow a lot of other sports. Anything else that catches the eye on the weekend? Uh, Tiger Woods is teeing off in 20 minutes or so, and I saw seven to ten about him making the cut, and I've got to tell you that's massive. Um, so my golf betting this weekend, I know that I could. Back a couple of players to win. I'm looking at one of my mates back to uh, DeChambeau with me is uh, six to one. To, uh, sorry, a uh, minus six. Um, I don't know if he'll hold on and, and win. I didn't like him. I liked Rahm and Hovland. And, uh, but i got to say, it's seven or ten. Tiger Woods, that's a shoe in There's 35 geriatrics in this tournament that can't win. So he literally has to beat 10 or 12 mediocre golfers to make the cut here. Tiger Woods at 7 or 10 to make the cut. I've got to say it's the better of the month. That sounds like quite a good one, except the problem is these days Tiger's a bit of a geriatric himself. The, the only thing that stands between you and your that bet is his health, quite frankly, because he, he struggles to put four rounds together. But he's just making the comment, biggest UFC weekend ever, he's saying. It's UFC 300. We've got a thread on the forum. Make sure you go to that. But he does commentate there under Double R, I think his name is there. And uh, I might do a video on that tomorrow night. Yes, Gav? Uh, it should be URC. It's rugby, not football. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> UFC. I often, I often mix the two up, I must tell you. Right, anyway, guys, we'll cut it there. <laughs> Poor old Nathan's got a day of work ahead of him. We're going to have a drink and uh, probably have a bit of an early night this side. I've got I've a preview. Oh, you've got something got else for us, I've got one thing for you. So I was, in the, I was at the pub on Wednesday night and a guy gave me a racing tip. So you've got to share a good racing tip, right? When you okay, no, so, go for it. So... <laughs> so this is uh, this, these are our horses running at Ramwick in Australia, and um, this guy he had a share in a horse called Orchestral, which is um, like quite a famous horse in New Zealand. Um, but so he said you can't just back it by itself because it's too short now. It's backed into sort of like one sixty five or something. But he said if you uh, you, you do put it in a multi or a parlay with Via Sestina, so that's um, that's running in race eight, Orchestral in race six, um, both both to win there. That's what he that's what he told me. So, that's you know, Saturday, obviously. That's, that's Saturday, yeah, in Australia, Randwick in Australia. So, you know, you, when the man in the pub gives you a tip, you've got to share it, right? So You've got to, you, you've got to take it. I thought Oracle writing that one down, so I can tell you he's <laughs> definitely going to be looking at that. Blake, just asking, uh, Mossman, do you follow the NRL? Uh, I do, but, like, kind of only just the Warriors. You know, like, I don't follow it gen more generally enough. I'd like, I'd like to give it a go, but at the moment, like, I'm spread pretty thin across, you know. Yeah, well, there's so much like, rugby. It's pretty, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty tough. Anyway, um, if you are watching the master, shout home Scotty Scheffler for me. I've had a uh, quite a big punt on him with the top three insurance there with, with Bet Exchange. So looking forward to that. Had a good but start, Brent. He's on, uh, he's on minus two at the turn. He's done quite well already. Good, good. I want him to be there handy. He's, last year, I backed him to defend his title, and he just his putter was absolutely cold. And at Augusta, you can't, you can't win unless you're holding a few putts. He's, he's the rest of his game so good he can probably not be the best putter and win but he can't be the worst putter and win so we'll see what what happens there but thanks to all the guys on the live chat we had a great turnout tonight always good chatting to you we'll see you next week for the handicap rugby chat that matters cheers everyone cheers, cheers.